Here we got some fine tuning work being done on an antelope, or I should say pronghorn, North American pronghorn cape. Working on the nasal features right now, the nose, the upper part of the muzzle. Working on the lip. And some shaving. Got to get all that meat and membrane off and shave it down. basically a procedure that's time consuming and you have to have extreme attention to detail. You probably will nick the skin or cut a couple holes into the skin. This really can't be helped. Regardless of how proficient you have become over the years, how skilled you are, or how fast or how slow you do it, you will inevitably make mistakes. Down here we can see this one eye has already been done. It's already been shaved around the eye. Attention to detail is very important. Make sure you don't shave off the eyelashes or you shave way too thin around that area and he calls the hair roots to be cut and then of course the hair will fall out on the opposite side shaving down the lips getting them thin show how thin those lips are now see those lips are thin okay Okay, now we're going to work on the nose. We can see the rounded stick that we use. It's coming up through the uh, nasal cavity now. And on this particular pronghorn antelope cape, uh, the nose was burst open. I don't know if it was from the hunter or what the deal was, but it had a great big cut in the nose. Of course, we got to repair that. And these things are more or less common, one form or another. Some place on the cape, you're probably going to have to do some sewing. And other ways to get around sewing, you should always try to sew if you can, because that uh, actually provides the strongest bond to hold two pieces of leather together, is you can go ahead and use a lot of hide paste or epoxy and pin the cut area together ever so carefully just to go ahead and make sure it sticks but we'll show that later on in the finished mount because this antelope will be mounted up today antelope and pronghorn are interchangeable words but they do have different meanings meanings so uh, there well nostrils going up there and being shaved upwards to pare that skin down so it fits over the form. Another important feature that uh, people need to take into consideration when working on a pronghorn antelope is the scent glands that are located right directly underneath the eyes. 
down on a little bit further I should say down on the cheek patch itself you'll see a, a black set of hair in an oblong egg shaped circular working on the other nostril now paring it down ever so carefully just takes time patience is a virtue Good example of a little flushing beam that we use for facial features. You can make them various different sizes for moose, elk, deer, similar size animals, and even small game. Works on the same principle as a flushing beam. 2x4, you could take a 2x6 or a 2x8, round it off, round off up in here, round off the edges, and go ahead and coat it because I guarantee you over time. Uh, it's going to look like this one, well used, and it needs to be resanded and recoated to protect it with polyurethane or something of that nature. Very useful tool to use. You lay the skin down, the mouth, the nose, pull it tight, and then you can shave it ever so thin, ever so carefully. Very useful. Another useful item for facial detail, I like to call it fine tuning, is a simple broom handle, broomstick, round dowel that's been rounded on one end, it's a little bit larger for larger nostrils and eye areas and eye orbits, to a smaller area that's been rounded, smoothed down. Now you obviously you're going to nick it and things like that and you come down every so often, you re-sand it, get it smooth again because there you can pull the skin tight and shave it thin. You can see the thin pieces that's got to be taken off. And we'll come back over the skin again and uh, put some more cream tan on it. This has already been cream tan. It's already been shaved on the flushing machine. Sometimes when we use the uh, tanning ingredient, ingredients, it'll go ahead and uh, darken the skin a little bit, especially if it's been tumbled in sawdust. Boy, be busy shaking off all kinds of sawdust and using a cage, <laughs> twirling that cage around, trying to shake off all that. Now here, uh, we're looking at the uh, scent glands. There are scent glands that are on all pronghorn, North American pronghorn. Go ahead and flip that over and let's show everybody what the scent glands, where you can locate them at. Right there in the black area underneath the eye. Right there. Alright, let's go back over there. It's a uh, egg shaped gland, it looks like this basically, that's got to be cut out of there. I shaved down most of that on the flesh machine, made a couple of nicks, but that's the way it is. Got to come back. I got to come back and sew those. But uh, then, uh, when you're doing the fine tuning, you can come back and look at that gland and make sure you got it all. But uh, that's basically what it is. It's it's usually about. Uh, uh, I've seen them from an eighth to three uh, three eighths of an inch thick, and it's a rounded gland that's right directly in the uh, on the back of those uh, black hair roots. Again, it's shaped like that, egg shaped like, and you just cut that out. You can see it's down in there. And uh, once that's done, it's done. You got the fine tune done. Now you come back and you do anything else you want to do to it. Sew up any holes, get things looking good. Uh, reuse some cream tan in these areas here. It's been shaved. And uh, 
This puppy's ready to go.